Say, when it comes to horror, some people think that the gore fest movies, the slasher type films, don't really qualify as horror. They should be in their own separate genre. I'm not so sure about that. For a while there, the slasher films were all the rage. It was difficult to find a horror film that involved anything relating to the supernatural or monsters. Everybody was kind of a slasher type, you know, let's see how gross we can get. I think it pinnacled with uh, uh, Eli Roth's Hostel series. I mean, that was that was pretty over the top, I'd say. Uh, personally, I never thought of those films as horror films. I, they're they're gross-out fests, is what they are. They're an ability to have the special effects guys just trying to make everybody go, ew, in the audience, you know, and just trying to do it that way. So, yeah, there's a place for them, I'm sure. I'm not a big fan. i got to tell you that right up front. Full disclosure, I am not a fan of these movies, but... If you're going to make one, who better to do it than the folks at Dread Central? Cinematic class is about to begin. Your professor is it. Say good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Fiore, your cinematic professor and purveyor of truth in movies. Tonight's lesson plan is called Arctic. Now, has nothing to do with cold. You're not going to see Kurt Russell looking up saying, ah, first goddamn week of winter. No, nothing like that is going to happen, okay? Arctic, A-R-T-I-K, is the name of the, the lead character here. And I got to tell you, this guy really pulls this off. Now, I said in the beginning I'm not a fan of these gore fest uh, movies that just try to gross you out. Uh, but Jerry G. Angelo plays Arctic. And he does a really good job. The first time he appeared on camera, I went, oh, this guy's a little bit different, but wow, he pulls this thing off great. Casting on this particular role is what made everything in this. He's a lot of fun to watch in this. You remember a few years back, M. Night Shyamalan made a classic movie called Unbreakable, and he centered all of his characters around comic books. Well, Arctic kind of sort of does the same thing. Comic books are at the center of the plot line, and it's uh, right up the alley for people who think that, you know, there is a lot of wisdom and truth in comics and that they are truly a great literature. And for those folks, and those are usually the same folks that like the Gore Fest, so this is really a, a match made in heaven with this movie. It's also, you know, there's always some kind of natural element involved, and this one has sunflower seeds. So <laughs> you see these giant sunflowers, and I said, yeah, you don't see those in the movies too often. You are going to get everything in this movie if you're into the blood and gore type. Most of the killings are done with railroad spikes, so there's something nice and interesting for you. There is uh, an electric knife where people are being flayed. <laughs> electric knife from the kitchen. Uh, and 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 you also get death by frying pan. Now, you know, that's, that's a classic, so you, you got to keep that in there, too. The movie is, uh, is really rather bizarre. It pretty much follows a standard, uh, what you've come to expect from these movies. There's naturally a wackadoo loony family out on the loose, and they're we're just killing people, you know, to, to keep whatever they're doing going. So, you know, and somebody finds out about it and tries to stop it, and then, you know, wow, the killings get uh, compounded and even more gruesome as the family tries to keep it secret. So, uh, you know, we're down familiar territory here. It's a familiar road, but this is put together pretty nice. Now, it's a little bit slower toward the beginning while they develop the characters, and that's the time that uh, Angelo really has a time to kind of get into his character and tell you what he's all about. Uh, he's kind of a cerebral guy. And then once, you know, once the good guys find out what's going on there and try to stop it, then things just keep moving back and forth. And it should provide you with enough uh, of that ooh stuff that you look for if you're looking for. Going, you know, it's really good to see the folks at Dread coming back again. This movie actually didn't have the Dread Central on it. It had Dread. So this is one that they made incomplete form with epic since they 
banded together. I'm guessing possibly the vault now, the basement is washed out and we're seeing films. If you're going to have a film like this, why not have it from these folks? They know what they're doing. It's good to see them back on track again after they had you know, gone into a little bit of a slump there. Uh, and this one puts them right back. Like it's not my particular cup of tea, but I know a lot of you out there like it. And if you're patient with it through the first 30 minutes or so, I think you'll find this one uh, pretty enjoyable. A uh, lot of railroad spikes, man. <laughs> it's, it's pretty bizarre. Now that you have learned what you have learned, here end of your lesson.